Hello doctors, I hope everyone is doing great. Welcome to Easy Medicine. Today we will discuss Medicine 1 past papers for final year MBBS. Before starting, it is better to know how important the topic is and how much weight does it carry in the real exam. So here I have provided you with distribution of marks for Medicine Paper 1. In this video, we will discuss nervous system. And as you can see, you will have one question from this topic in your final exam. I would also like to tell you that you will see a blue box in the right corner of your screen with every answer. This will provide you with reference page number of Davidson's book of medicine from where the answer is taken. I have done this so that you can authenticate the answers yourself and to assure you that the answers are accurate since these are taken from a good UHS recommended book. For the purposes of this video, page numbers are taken from 22nd edition of Davidson's book of medicine. Let's see our first question. Since there were two questions about this topic in past papers, so I have grouped them together for your ease. You can stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it on your own before we discuss it together. Very good. So the answer is tonic clonic seers. As I have discussed in previous videos that students mainly struggle with reaching a diagnosis than with answering the subsequent questions. So some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are jerky movements of whole body associated with passage of urine and tongue bite followed by no memory of the event. Let's see the answer. So as you can see the answer is tonic clonic seer. The second question also asked about three broad group of causes for the condition and investigations for each group. So the first group of causes are metabolic disorders and they include hypoglycemia, liver failure or renal failure. And the investigations to diagnose this group of causes are blood glucose level, blood urea and electrolytes and liver function tests. And the second group of causes are infective disorders and they include syphilis, meningitis, post-infectious and cephalopathy. And the investigations for this group are CBC, ESR, serology for syphilis and CSF examination. The third group of causes are structural lesions and they include tuberous sclerosis, multiple sclerosis and neurofibromatosis and investigations for this group are CT scan and MRI. The first question also asked about investigations which should be ordered initially and they include EEG and CT scan or MRI of the brain. Next is management of this condition and remember that every management begins with history and physical examination followed by investigations and investigations are same as above. And the last step of the management is treatment. The second question also asked about first aid which should be provided during an attack. So the first aid includes moving the person away from the danger such as fire or machinery and after the convulsion stop turning the patient into a semi prone position. This position is also called recovery position. The next point is do not insert anything into the patient's mouth. This point is very important since people usually try to put something into the patient's mouth to avoid tongue bite which should be avoided. And if convulsions continue for more than 5 minutes or recur without regaining of consciousness between the episodes then call for urgent medical attention. And the last point is do not leave the patient alone until fully recovered. The next step in management is lifestyle advices and these advices include avoiding long cycle journeys, activities requiring proximity to water such as swimming or boating should only be done in company of someone and avoid driving for at least one year of seer free episode. Next is drug therapy for tonic-clonic seers and the first line drugs are Velproate and Levitracetam. Monitoring of drug therapy can be done by measuring serum levels of drugs and surgical intervention can be done if patient continue to have seizures despite appropriate drug therapy. And these surgical procedures include resection of focal brain lesions which is responsible for seizures or doing deep brain stimulation. The last step of the management is withdrawing of anticonvulsant therapy. It should only be done when there is a seizure free episode of more than 2 years. And here is the blue box which will provide you with page numbers of Davidson's book of medicine from where the answer is taken. Let's see your next question. Stop the video here, read the question and try to answer before we discuss it together. Very good. So the answer is migraine and some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are unilateral throbbing headache associated with nausea, vomiting and photophobia. 
These points can lead you to the diagnosis of migraine. Let's see the answer. So the answer is migraine headache. The next part of the question also asked about precipitating factors for this condition. And these are estrogen containing oral contraceptive, cheese, chocolate, red wine, psychological stress. The last part of the question asked about managing this condition. And as every management, it will begin with history and examination, followed by investigations. Since diagnosis is usually made with detailed history and physical examination, so investigations are only done to rule out other possibilities. And these investigations include CBC and ESR. These two investigations are done to exclude infection, CT or MRI. These are done to exclude structural lesion. The last step of the management is treatment, and treatment begins by educating the patient about avoiding the precipitating factors. Treatment of acute attack involves aspirin, paracetamol, or NSAIDs. For severe attacks, triptans can be used, and associated nausea can be treated with antiemetics, such as metoclopramide. Since migraine is a chronic condition, preventive treatment is usually required, and this preventive treatment includes calcium channel antagonists, beta blockers, and antidepressants such as amitriptyline and antiepileptics such as Velproate. And here is the blue box with reference page numbers from Davidson. To diagnose migraine, it needs to be differentiated from other types of headaches such as cluster headache or tension headache. So here I have provided you with some important points by which you can differentiate migraine from these other headaches. So, migraine is characterized by unilateral headache which is throbbing in nature and it is associated with nausea, vomiting, photophobia or phonophobia. Cluster headache usually presents with unilateral headache which is constant in nature and it begins behind the eye. It is associated with lacrimation and nasal congestion. And tension headache is characterized by bilateral headache which is usually in a band-like pattern it is dull in nature and associated with muscle stiffness in neck and shoulders. Let's do the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it before we discuss it together. Very good, so the diagnosis is focal seers. And since the question asked about comprehensive diagnosis, so it will be focal seers due to cerebral infarction. And some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are episode of lip smacking associated with excessive blinking and staring in space with no response to verbal commands. And the point indicating towards cerebral infarction is a large hypodense area on a previous CT scan. Let's see the answer. So the answer is post cerebral infarction focal seizures. And the question also asked will you start treatment for this episode and why? So, treatment for this episode must be started because there is 40% chance of recurrence. Also, focal seizures can generalize and lead to tonic-clonic seizures. So, to avoid recurrence and avoiding the development of tonic-clonic seizures, treatment for this episode must be started. The third part of the question asked about first-line and second-line treatment for this type of seizures. So, the first-line treatment for focal seizures is lamotrigine, and second-line treatment for focal seizure is Velproate. The last part of the question asked about risk factors which can lead to the recurrence of this type of episode and they are loss of sleep, flickering lights and physical exhaustion. And here is the reference page number from where the answer is taken. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it on your own before we discuss it together. Alright, since the question asked about different variants of this condition, so first we need to know what the condition is. And the condition described in this scenario is motor neuron disease. And some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are weakness of all four limbs, wasting and decreased power in lower and upper limbs, fasciculations, increased reflexes and normal sensory system on examination. Let's see the answer. So different variants of motor neuron disease are progressive muscular atrophy, progressive bulbar palsy, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. The second part of the question asked about treatment and the patients with this condition are managed by a multidisciplinary approach involving physiotherapists, speech and occupational therapists and dietitians apart from specialist physicians. And the drug used for this condition is Riluzole. Non-invasive ventilation and feeding through percutaneous gastrostomy may improve quality of life of some patients with this condition. And here you can see the reference page number of Davidson's book of medicine. 
Let's do the next question. You can stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it before we answer it together. Good, so the cerebral arteries involved are left middle and left anterior cerebral artery and I will discuss how the cerebral arteries are involved in just a second. Let's see the answer. And as you can see, left middle cerebral and left anterior cerebral arteries are involved. And involvement of these arteries is given by a distribution of human body on cerebral cortex. And here is a picture which represents distribution of human body on cerebral cortex. And as you can see, lower limbs are represented medially on cerebral cortex and upper limbs are represented laterally on cerebral cortex. Since lateral cortex is supplied by middle cerebral artery and medial cortex is supplied by anterior cerebral artery. So involvement of both these will result in weakness in upper and lower limbs as seen in the patient. The next part of the question asked about fixed risk factors and these are age, gender in which it is more common in males than in females, high fibrinogen, previous vascular events such as myocardial infarction or peripheral vascular disease. The third part of the question asked about what is the time limit within which thrombolysis can be done. So the answer is thrombolysis by reverse transcriptase plasminogen activator that is RTPA can only be done within 4.5 hours of onset of symptoms of stroke. And this is done to avoid intracranial hemorrhage due to excessive thrombolysis. And here is the blue box with reference page number of Davidson's book of medicine from where the answer is taken. Let's do the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it before we answer it together. Very good. So the diagnosis is cerebral infarction or stroke. Since the question asked about a comprehensive diagnosis, so a comprehensive diagnosis is cerebral infarction due to cardiac embolism which developed due to atrial fibrillation. And some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are sudden onset of weakness in right half of the body which indicates cerebral infarction and the point which leads you toward atrial fibrillation is irregularly irregular pulse and as we know atrial fibrillation is an important cause of cardiac embolism. Let's see the answer. So here the answer is cerebral infarction due to cardiac embolism which developed due to atrial fibrillation. The next part of the question asked about investigations and the investigations are CT or MRI of the brain echocardiogram which is most important investigation if cardiac embolism is suspected and in this scenario cardiac embolism is suspected because of atrial fibrillation as we discussed earlier. The other investigations are ECG, CBC, ESR, blood glucose, lipid profile, duplex ultrasound of carotids, CT and geography. And the last part of the question asked about management and remember that every management begins with history and physical examination followed by investigations which are given above. And the last part of the management is treatment. And the treatment is supportive care, which includes checking airway, breathing and circulation, and providing adequate hydration and nutrition to the patient. Monitoring of blood pressure and blood glucose of the patient is also important. Medications which can be given are plasminogen activator, which should be given within 4.5 hours of onset of symptoms as we discussed in the previous question and the other medication which can be given is aspirin. The last step of the management is treatment of the risk factors which in this case is atrial fibrillation. And here is the blue box with reference page number of Davidson's book of medicine. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it before we discuss it together. Very good, so the diagnosis is Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is also called GBS. And the important points which can lead you to this diagnosis is weakness in both upper and lower limbs for last one week and difficulty in breathing which started recently that is for last 24 hours and loss of sensation and absent tendon jerks. Let's see the answer. So the answer is Guillain-Barre syndrome. The next part of the question asked about CSF findings and CSF shows raised protein, normal cell count and normal glucose. This type of CSF findings is commonly referred to as albuminocytological dissociation. The last part of the question asked about treatment and treatment involves supportive measures, example prevention of bed sores and deep venous thrombosis, plasma exchange and intravenous immunoglobulins. Also regular monitoring of vital capacity since this disease can eventually lead to respiratory failure. 
The question also asked about what will you do if the patient's oxygen saturation drops further. So if the patient's oxygen saturation drops further, mechanical ventilation is started. And here is the blue box with reference page numbers from Davidson. Let's do the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it before we discuss it together. Excellent, so the diagnosis is meningitis. And as I discussed before that students mainly struggle with reaching a diagnosis than with answering the subsequent questions. So some important points here which can lead you towards the diagnosis of meningitis are fever, neck pain and headache. On examination, you will find neck rigidity and no focal deficits. Let's see the answer. See here the answer is meningitis. The second part of the question asked about investigations and the investigations are lumbar puncture. This is the most important investigation in case of suspected meningitis and CT scan which needs to be done before lumbar puncture to exclude increased intracranial pressure because lumbar puncture is contraindicated in increased intracranial pressure. And the other investigations are blood culture and PSR which can be done on CSF or blood sample. The last part of the question asked about empiric treatment. So for adults of 18 to 50 years old, cefotaxime or ceftriaxone are given. Dose of cefotaxime is 2 gram IV 4 times daily, while dose of ceftriaxone is 2 gram IV twice daily. Adjuvant treatment with dexamethasone can also be given. One important point about lumbar puncture is that the layers which are passed while doing this procedure are skin, subcutaneous tissue, supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament, ligamentum flavum, dura mater and finally arachnoid mater and after this you will reach subarachnoid space which will contain CSI. And here is the reference page numbers from Davidson from where the answer is taken. And this finishes our discussion on past papers of nervous system. Before ending this video, I'm sharing with you some bonus MCQs so that you can practice some questions. These MCQs are made from some really important topics. You can solve these MCQs by stopping the video and writing your answers in the comments below. I'll share the answers to these MCQs in a comment below after a week of uploading this video. If you have any query, feel free to ask, I'll be happy to answer. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that they can benefit too with these past papers. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for upcoming past paper videos. Good luck.